Good morning. Good morning. What a joy it is for us to be gathered together as the people of God. We are children together, uh, and I welcome each and every one of you, whether this is your first time with us or you're returning after being away. We are glad that you're here as part of the family. I want to uh, invite you to take the red uh, booklets that are in the end at the center. Make sure you sign at them and pass them down. We might know who is worshiping with us and that you might know who's worshiping around you. And you'll get a chance to greet them in in just a moment. Um, I know that you probably didn't see it or wouldn't even notice it because it's in the back patio. But uh, this last Friday, uh, our uh, Jewish congregation that worships uh, here uh, Congregation Havarim uh, built their, their Sukkot tent um, and celebrated Sukkot. Sukkot is the celebration that ends their high holy days. Uh, they had celebrated Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And it's a, a celebration, a, kind of a multiple celebration of praising God and giving God thanks. One is uh, the tents to remind them of their journey through the desert, uh, their ancestors of the 40 years in the desert and God providing a place for them uh, to be able to camp out to the tents and then they would eat in those tents and so when they had their meal after the service they got gathered I don't think they all got in there Uh, it's pretty big but I don't think they but they went in and they probably had some some food Uh, the tradition was that the men of course it was all revolving around men way back way back uh, but the men would sleep and also take their meals there. Uh, now it's actually uh, forbidden that they do that, uh, kind of just to be in there and to celebrate that. So if you want to take a moment, it's nothing super special. You're not going to say, oh, wow, look at that. But just to, to kind of a connection for us, because we are all people of an ancestry to Abraham. And so for us, this is a part of our Uh, roots and our DNA, if you will. Uh, So I just wanted to share that and to to let you know also that we have this congregation that that celebrates with us. And as they go on, they're open and and, and some of these holidays for us to come and we're invited to be a, a part of their group. So I wanted to share that with you this morning. So I want to invite you at this time as in body and spirit, Uh, to stand and to turn and somehow greet one another however you're comfortable and remain standing for our opening song. Directly into it, but just step forward. And, yeah. All right, Corey. Yep. Please remain standing and uh, join me in the call to worship. Welcome to God's house. We are delighted to have you here. 
We hunger for God's word and hope. You have come to the right place. Here you will be fed on the life-giving love of God. We thirst for God's healing in our lives. At the table of the Lord, you will be fed and your thirst quenched. Thanks be to God who provides for our needs. You may be seated. I want to uh, I want to invite Drew. Come on up, Drew. I know you were ready to come on up and come on up here. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a chance and see if I can get up here. You want to come up one more one more step so you can be a little. How are you this morning again? Good. You're good. It's good to have you up here. How was your birthday? That was last week. How was it? Great. Great. All right. Just good to be here, but great for your birthday. Good. You had a lot of fun? Yeah. And all that's great. I'm glad to hear that. So I know today with your mom, because I know your mom's teaching, that you're going to talk about a person named Moses. Moses. Moses, that's right. I know you've been talking about him. The last couple of weeks you've been talking about Moses. And you talked about him, I know, a couple of weeks ago about him as a baby and then uh, as he got older, and now I'll talk about Moses and another person. You're going to talk about a person that his title, it's not his name, it's his title. Just like my title is Pastor, my name is Rick. So this person's title is Pharaoh, and he was like the king of all of Egypt. And so you're going to talk about how Moses and Pharaoh um, kind of had some struggles with one another, I think. But you'll learn more about that when you get to class. But the important thing to know is that Moses depended on God and for God to help Moses because there was going to be a lot of struggles as you're going to learn about Moses. A lot of struggles for Moses and the people he's trying to help. And it's God that's there with him and helping him. And that's something for us to remember because when we have struggles, when we have troubles, it's God that's there to help us. So even when you're at school, and sometimes you don't always have the most fun at school, or maybe the class is hard, the subject that you're learning is hard, but God's there just to kind of help you, to get you through it, okay? Okay. Okay. So we're going to have a prayer now, okay? And then you can go back with your mom and you can go learn about Moses, okay? okay? So let's pray. So let's fold our hands, bow our heads. Thank you, God for helping us when we have our struggle. And thank you for always being with us and loving us. And thank you, God, to allow us to love others. Amen. Have a great day, okay? And then you go back down with your mom or dad, okay? okay. See you later. Hopefully you're all watching him and not watching me. <laughs> So I want to invite you to turn your attention to the, to the screens or in your bulletin of the uh, invitations and opportunities that uh, are happening. One of them is today, uh, that you're happening today. And come on up, Marlene, you can show. I'm going to actually just talk about it, but you can come up so we can see some of the wonderful things that the folks can, uh, can get. So helping to support, as Marlene has been telling you for the last couple weeks, to support Prayers and Squares and uh, I want to talk about the ministry. She's been talking about how it helps to provide for the opportunity to make these wonderful quilts. We have two more that we're blessing. Uh, but we've been able to do, and Marlene can give you the statistics on numbers and all that, but we've been able to, throughout the world, send uh, these quilts to provide just comfort and, and hope for people who are struggling in uh, their lives. And we've been talking about over the last uh, year plus about our vision of striving to end spiritual and physical hunger. And this is one ministry that does that. As the people receive it and we get notes back and words back and how these quilts have, have touched persons. And so the boutique that we're going to have uh, helps to be able to provide some of the resources to be able to make those quilts. So what do you have for us this morning? Well, first... This is quilt 403 and 402 that have gone out from our little person squares group. Great. So I'm really proud of our group. 
I just brought a few things in because you can go outside and see what's left. We had a lot of shoppers before church. But here's a little Halloween wall hanging that uh, you can have in your house or on your porch or whatever. And then uh, we have quite a few of these little drawings that I do. This one to someone at Sue. It says, kindness lifts, encourages, heals, and it's free. And we have some uh, Bible verses and little wall hangings, great presents for people or for yourself. And we have seasonal table runners. We have, I made two of these Christmas ones that you can take home to decorate your house or buy for somebody for a present and support this ministry. So thank you so much. We appreciate all your support. And if by chance you miss out on this one, then on the 3rd of December, you'll have the next opportunity as well. So that's... What about the books? Or? Yeah, let's see what's up next. I think, actually, I'm going to talk about Lunch Bunch. Uh, so if you've not signed up and you'd like to join us uh, this Thursday uh, for Lunch Bunch, we are uh, eating at Guadalajara's. We made the arrangements. Uh, the sign-up is on the table, out the door to my right, to your left. Uh, we need to have you sign up today so we can make sure we give them the correct numbers and they're uh, anticipating and, and waiting for us. Uh, but we have good fellowship and, and a good time and you get a chance maybe to meet some new friends. So we look forward to it. So we look forward to that. Now you can talk about this one. Is, I think the next two are... Project Touch. Anne, who was the visionary founder of Project Touch, started it about 20 years ago, and her vision is to end homelessness. And it services people in our community. It's local, and it's faith-based. And she is going to come and talk to us and share with us. I want you to, if, possible, if at all possible, to come to hear her story, to hear what's being done, what the homeless situation is in our community. And... Um, it's open to men and women, bring friends and neighbors. Everybody needs to know what's going on. And it's just a real wonderful opportunity to have her to come. And I'm really thankful she said yes. It's sponsored by the United Women in Faith. And it's going to be in room one, unless we have a huge turnout, which is fine. And uh, it'll be at 1030 on Thursday the 19th. I put the, said the wrong number last week. So if you got last week's flyer, cross out the 20 and write 19. <laughs> and then on the 20th of October, actually on the 20th, we're starting the discussion in Amy Jill Levine's book on the Gospel of Mark. She's a fascinating woman. She's a New Testament scholar. She's Jewish. She teaches at Vanderbilt University. And she has a wonderful take on scripture and incorporating the Old Testament. And she's very humorous on top of that. And so I hope you'll sign up in the hall. There's a bookmark there you can take with you if you sign up so you make sure you get the right book and you can mark it. And if you have any questions, just see me. I'll be out there selling stuff. <laughs> God bless. Great. Thanks, Marla. And then I also want to share with you an invitation. Uh, the Master Corral, who, uh, Temecula Valley Master Corral, who uh, uses our facilities to be able to rehearse and prepare for their concerts, are doing their... Uh, first, if you will, concert, their, their mini concert, chance to kind of share a couple pieces in which they uh, perform. Uh, I don't exactly know the whole lineup for the concert, but that'll be on October 22nd at 3 o'clock here. So it's open to anyone. Invite your friends, your neighbors, and, and uh, all to come and be here and uh, help support the Master Crow and get them all excited about their coming uh, performance year. So we look forward to to that and it's also their way of thanking us for allowing them to be able to be here and to be able to to rehearse throughout the year as well so this morning's uh, quilt this quilt here this one right here uh, is for Craig Evans uh, Craig and Karen were former members of, of this church family uh, they were the youth directors the first youth directors as well um, and uh, Craig has, uh, has um, gotten cancer and uh, so needing prayers for comfort and strength during this time. So that's this first quilt. The second quilt, I have to... It is for uh, Moises uh, Sosa. 
uh, for a time of healing and comfort. So we want to lift up prayers for these two persons. Let us pray. Holy, wonderful God, we just are blessed that we do have the resources and we have the open hearts and willingness and care and love to reach out with these gifts. And we thank you that you bless them. And as those who receive them, Moises and Craig, that they'll know of your love that surrounds them, that holds them close, and that you provide strength and comfort for them as they deal with their ailments and illnesses. We pray, O oh God, as they receive them, they have the hope and, and they are, um, that their faith will carry them on during this time. And we pray for those who surround them and hold them. We offer this and ask your blessings in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Light this candle for peace as we have been lighting uh, for several months, um, actually more than a year, uh, but a candle that needs to continuously be uh, lit uh, for the community, for the world, as we pray for an end to violence and war and hatred wherever it finds itself. We pray for those that still deal with with COVID. People even in our own uh, church family, those that are our neighbors and friends, and those throughout uh, the world that continue to, to have to battle COVID. And we pray for uh, continued, as I've been lifting up, uh, continued vaccines and other forms of, of care to be able to squash this, this horrible uh, disease. What other prayers do we have? I'll start over here. Any prayers? Go ahead, Phil. Yes, uh, Nick and uh, friend, uh, Mandy Rose, her brother passed away of a heart attack. Uh, do you happen to know his, his name? No. Okay, but we want to pray for, for Manny, Manny's brother who passed. Yes. Any others? Did I see another hand over here? Over here. Go ahead, Vaughn. So prayers for um, Nathaniel and his journey uh, with sobriety. Yes. Other prayers. Go ahead, Diane. Hospice. Prayers for Andrew and Nicholas, uh, who has uh, fallen and broken her hip, but also on hospice now. We, we do lift her up in prayers. Go ahead, Kathy. Say that, say the, the name again. Vicky. Vicky. For the loss of uh, father. father, for the loss of father, we do want to hold up prayers for the family during this this time of loss. Yep. Go ahead, Penny. So now is she coming home? Yes. Going home, yeah. So prayers, continue prayers for Marta for strength, for easing of pain, continued easing of pain, and for the long journey that she still has in re recovery. So we pray that God's presence will lift her up as well. Great. Let us offer these prayers and those that continue to be on our hearts and mind. Let us pray, God. Pray to God, let us pray.
God, we just take a moment to just to just be. To have this sense and this feeling of your spirit. As we breathe in that your spirit is that life breath that comes in to our lungs and fills them and our heart and our whole being. This life that provides strength and hope And courage to walk in a faith that helps us to not only endure but to thrive in our world, in our community, in our homes. that we follow faithfully in the way of your son Jesus to love, to forgive, to do unto others as we want them to do unto us. And as we do that, O oh God, we are mindful of the people who are in pain those that are in physical pain due to illnesses and injury, surgeries, those that are in pain because of their life circumstances and the struggles they have with addiction. We pray for those who are in pain emotionally and dealing with depression. May they know either by us directly or feel your spirit that they are wanted and loved and there is help for them. We pray for those that are in pain because of the hatred or the violence that is perpetrated upon them because of the color of their skin, because of their economic situation, because of their gender, because of their sexuality, because and because we pray, O oh God, an end to that hatred that is perpetrated on those that are on the fringes of your family, our community. That we, O oh God, as your children, can welcome them in and include all. And embrace them in love. We thank you, O oh God, this, for this morning, for those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, or whose family members are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries and reunions, for the joy of a fall, phone call from a loved one. We thank you, God, for just the opportunity to have felt the sprinkles that blessed us yesterday. We thank you for your creation. And help us to be the ones that are good stewards of that creation. These are just some of our prayers of faith, O oh God, as we think of those that we lift up 
those who are mourning the grief or the loss of loved ones, those who are just glad that they are here in the midst of this family. We thank you for the opportunity to be in touch with you through our prayers. So we offer them this morning, O God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Spirit that is our life. Amen. In your bulletin, we have an anthem listed, Hear My Send Me. It is a beautiful anthem, and you will get to enjoy it at a later date. Our anthem this morning is a communion anthem, Come Share the Lord. It is a reminder that, as Pastor Rick prayed, when so many of the things that separate us today um, are in our vision and burden our hearts, it is here at the table of the Lord that we are reminded that everyone is welcome, not because of, but in spite of. And so we ask you to prayerfully listen to these words today, come share the Lord, and we acknowledge the talent of Mike Becker, who will take the uh, baritone solo.
The uh, scripture lesson this morning is from Philippians uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete by of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourself. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ Jesus, who, though he was from God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. May God add his blessing to the reading of this word. Some religions are spiritual traditions. Buddhism, for example, and adherents are encouraged to meditate, and as they do, empty their minds. The goal is to achieve Buddha himself, as Buddha himself said, to have achieved enlightenment. So people who are successful at meditation become blank slates, opening themselves up to a higher truth. Meditation slows down their brains and hearts enough uh, to allow them to just be free in a way. Many people find much benefit in meditation. As a matter of fact, last weekend, Marlene led a number of people in some exercises of meditation. It turns out that there's a difference between what serious Buddhists mean by emptying themselves in meditation and what Christians who pay attention to the scripture passage that we just heard read this morning from Philippians mean by the idea of Christ's own self-emptying, an emptying that Christian theologians called kenosis. The late Dr. Rawata Dehama a prominent Buddhist monk and a, and a noted scholar from Myanmar once explained this difference at a Buddhist Christian conference in London in 1993. There, he said, there is, he said, a major difference between Buddhism and Christianity. 
The, the Buddhism, one can become a Buddhism in the, in the realization of emptiness. But in Christianity, one cannot say that one can become Christ. Rather, this Christian realization is a participation in Christ's redemption, kenosis. Therefore, one does not become a Christ in the same way that one becomes a Buddha. And yet, we Christians are called to be Christ for one another, to be the hands, to be the feet, and very heart of the resurrected Christ in our wounded world. The good news is that the beautiful old hymn that's a major part of the passage that was just read from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi can help us understand how, how Christ's own self-emptying, his kenosis, can show us how, to show us how we are to act as Christ for others. One simple way of putting it, maybe it's too simple, is that we empty ourselves so that we can be filled with the spirit of the living Christ. This is similar to what we Christians say about baptism, which is that we die to ourselves, that we may put on Christ Jesus. In other words, we remove from ourselves whatever is preventing us from living fully as Christ's disciples. We set aside our ego, our desire for power and wealth, our self-centeredness, our temptation to sacrifice the well-being of others for our own well-being. We do our best, friends, in other words, to kick the evil instincts to the, to the curb and listen to our better angels. What biblical scholars recognize as a hymn that the Apostle Paul has included in this part of the letter to the Philippians begins with a prelude in in verse 5, which says, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Do you see the idea of, of emptying or kenosis here? You do your best to replace your own scrambled, uh, attentive, unruly mind with the love-focused mind of Christ. And who was Christ? Oh, that's the question. Now comes the fullness of this hymn that is included in our reading. It's a remarkable and beautiful passage that we do well to hear that section again. But this time I want you to hear it from the message by Eugene Peterson, recognizing that this is a paraphrase, not a translation of the original text. It's written in this way. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of deity and took on the status of a slave, becoming human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humbling process he didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death and the worst kind of death at that, a crucifixion. Because of the obedience, God lifted him high and honored him far beyond anyone or anything ever so that all created beings in heaven and on earth, even those long ago dead and buried will bow in worship before this Jesus Christ and call out in praise that he is the master of all to the glorious honor of God the Father. That, friends, is what theologians call high Christology, which is to say that it reflects a, a properly exalted view of this lowly servant Jesus, who is both fully human and fully divine. This hymn focuses on, of course, on the divine. 
You can find other examples of this high Christology as you read through the, through the New Testament, including probably one of the most well-known ones in the opening of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Apostle Paul, as we know, sometimes wrote in complicated, meandering sentences at least when the original Greek is translated into English. Perhaps because the Greek version itself is complex and wandering. So it's fair to ask whether these gorgeous words that don't seem to be meandering at, at all are words that Paul actually wrote. And many scholars would answer this way, well, probably not. The late and great... Catholic scholar and priest, Raymond E. Brown, writes this way. Most think that Paul wrote but didn't create these lines. They are probably a pre-Paulian hymn that the Philippians knew and that Paul may have taught them at the time of his first visit. This could have been a hymn that Paul got from the first apostles, if you will, Peter, James and John, when the church was first forming and, and Paul came to believe in Christ, it could have been a hymn from that church that he just, just accepted and believed and loved so much that he took it with him and he taught it. It's not clear, though, Brown writes, whether the hymn originally was written in Greek or Aramaic, which was the language that Jesus spoke and possibly the language of of these first disciples because they were all from the Galilean area, which Aramaic would have been more common. But in either case, Brown says, the meaning is clear. The Philippians are to have the mind of Christ who showed that the way to God is not by grasping at a higher place on the ladder, but by becoming humbly obedient to God, even unto death on the cross. See what paradoxical and difficult religion Christianity can be? It's hard. We are to become like Jesus, who was God incarnate by becoming servants. To become filled with the Spirit of Christ, we must empty ourselves, not giving away our souls or spirits, but getting rid of those aspects of ourselves that would compete with Christ for space within our hearts and minds. Jesus said it plainly. If you want to be a leader, become a servant. But that seems so wildly countercultural idea in our time. When, when bookstores, and, and I mean those that are physical, but mostly those that are online, are filled with volumes urging us to watch out for number one. we got to care for ourselves to crawl over others on the way to the top. That's what society drums into us. But servanthood is the core idea of Christianity. It's one of the reasons it's such a hard faith to, to live out in such authentic ways. By the way, when Jesus speaks of us being servants. He doesn't limit that to people in the pews. Those of us like myself who preach the word and, and, and say that we are here to interpret the scriptures in our messages, we too are called to live out this, this calling, this message. If preachers praise the idea of having a servant's heart, but then in the rest of their ministry acts as if they have all the answers and that there's no need to challenge their wisdom, well, then, can you say the word hypocrisy? And when people come to church, they can tell if someone is authentic or not. And if they're not, they won't stay. And people will get the word that that pastor is not authentic. That's the thing about the teachings of Jesus, including his words about servanthood. They apply to everyone who claimed to be a Christ follower, from the newest church member to the most seasoned pastor who may be addressed as 
reverend doctor or some other title that is given to them in whatever denomination that they are from. When reading the book of Philippians, it helps to know that Paul offers instructions concerning a dispute between two church leaders if we were to read further on in Philippians. Both women, and I think what's key about this is not that, well, women are fighting. It's that the, he recognizes there are leaders that are women in the church. And he identifies them in chapter 4, four as Yoda and Syntec. Paul doesn't tell us what their dispute was. That's not important. But what is important is that he urges the women to move towards resolution and unity, to empty their minds and become one in Christ and to come together with that understanding. Each of them, in other words, is being asked to empty themselves, to be filled with that generous spirit of the living Christ. Indeed, Paul tells him how to do this when he writes, Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So what is Paul asking us to empty out? so that we can concentrate on this list that I just shared with you. Well, we are to empty out what is false. Whatever is dishonorable, whatever is unjust, whatever is impure, whatever is displeasing and not worthy of praise. So now imagine our politics, our political leaders in our community, in our country, in our state? What about the leaders and the people of our churches, our economic systems, our very world, how that would look if we emptied our minds and were one with Christ and lived in that spirit? So friends, let's empty ourselves of what distorts life, of what dishonors God, and let's be filled with the life-giving spirit of God who loves us and calls us to live in the light. And so we come to this table. And if there is any place where we can empty our minds and strive to be one with Christ, it is when we come here and we partake, partake in the meal that Christ offers us. A meal that is open to everyone. It doesn't matter where you are in your journey. As a matter of fact, if your mind is all cluttered and you're struggling, this is the time to come and to be at the table with our Lord. So I invite you to turn to page 15 in your hymnals and to be ready with the responses that are there. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks and praise to our God. Awesome God, from emptiness you created the stars and the moon. You whirled a planet into existence. From common mud of the earth you fashioned woman and man and called them good. With a silent persistence you have loved every creature and all creation. You ache every time we destroy beauty, every time we harm one another, every time we ignore the outstretched hand and turn away from the poor and wounded. You have called us through prophetic voices and human need. You call us to care for each other, to give our greedy habits and our violent ways. You invite us even now to join in a new dance of sharing and join with all the company of heaven in praising your abundant grace and joining our unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
holy and caring God, you sent us the compassionate one. You gave us Jesus who dared to touch the outcast, heal the sick, and call the dead to life. He challenged the complacent, broke down the dividing walls, and announced that a new reign of love had begun. By his compassionate life, his willing suffering, his resurrection, you let it be known that love is stronger than death, that hope overcomes despair, and that joy follows grief. You called forth the church to be a compassionate witness, a caring fellowship, a prophetic voice. On the night in which he gave himself up, at that meal he took the bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, to eat, this is my body broken for you. Each time you eat, remember me. Following the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for all people. Each time you drink it from it, remember the forgiveness of sins for all and the sign of the new covenants. And so in remembrance of your compassionate acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and deed as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Compassionate God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us. Fill us with courage and hope to share your transforming love with all in need. Bless this bread and cup that they may become our source of strength the living presence of the reconciling Christ. By your spirit, make us one, make us holy, make us bold. Glory, glory, glory. Be yours, loving God, now and forever. Amen. And now as the people of God, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite the ushers to come forward as we serve you all. Gilbert, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's your body. Mary, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's your body. Joseph, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's your body. Mary, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, and that's your body. Lord, the cup of salvation given to us. The cup of salvation given. Bread of life given for you. Bread of life given for you. Bread.
Take, eat, remember Christ. cup of salvation, take drink. This is for you. Remember Christ. That you, many of you are picking up the baskets. They are under the end seats in the center there. Let us pray. Most loving God, we give you thanks for this meal that has blessed us, that has filled us, that has called us out to be of one mind with your Son, Jesus Christ, that we might live with compassion and forgiveness and love. So we offer this prayer in the name of that Son, your Son, who lives for us. Amen. We prepare to give of our gifts and return to God just a portion of what God has given to us. I want to share with you that this morning's golden basket is to go and with all, not only United Methodists, but with uh, Christian denominations around the world, World Communion Sunday, a gift that provides uh, hope and opportunity for students around the world, especially students that are on the fringes of society and, and scholarships and, and gifts uh, to those in our country and, like I said, around the world. So we invite you, if you're moved to give a second offering, you can put it in the cloth inlaid basket and knowing that the plate is for the continued ministries here at the church that we might continue to serve in this community. So I invite the ushers to come forward at this time.
Loving God, you just keep giving and giving and giving. And we give you thanks for that. And we offer our gifts as a, as a way of sharing our love with you and with this community and with your world. We pray, O oh God, that we can go out to share the love, the peace, and the joy. In the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Let us join together our closing hymn that's up on the screens or be in the hymnal as well. Go now and may the love of our God, the peace and the joy of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the hope of the Holy Spirit fill you this day, this week, and always. Amen. Mike.